Why do we care about circles? We care about circles because circles are awesome. They are beautiful and simple shapes, and they're full of, as you can see them, they're full of symmetry, right? Um, they are the quintessentially symmetrical object. They're reflectionally symmetrical, they're rotationally symmetrical, they've got an infinite number of axes of symmetry. If you wanted to have a symmetrical object, this is it, okay? And that symmetry results in a whole bunch of properties, and we're gonna prove a bunch of them, okay? So, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, run through this list. We're going to prove each of these properties, but so that you get a sense of how this works and not get bogged down in all the, the sort of gears and technicalities, um, I'm not going to write out full and proper proofs. You guys know how to prove congruent triangles. You know how to prove similar triangles, parallel lines, all that kind of thing. So I'm not going to labor with those points. I'm just going to have a bit of fun with you, okay? So, the first uh, one there is about chords. Uh, actually, the first three about chords. So let me draw this picture for you, and then we'll try and um, explain the words that go into those little gaps. I apologize that the gaps are small. I was just desperate to include this all on one page, so that's why I've squeezed it in. So you'll need to write small. On your first circle, what I'd like you to do, uh, in addition to having your um, pair of compasses, is get a ruler out. Get a ruler out. And with your ruler, I would like you to join up any two points on the circumference of the circle. Uh, I'm going to use a lot of language here, some of which you know, like circumference, others of which I'm going to have to introduce. Okay? So find two spots, like say here and here, and go ahead, join them up with your ruler. Okay. Now once you've done that, I'd also like you to measure it while you're ruling it. Find out its length. Um, because I told you to pick any two points on the circumference, uh, maybe they're very close together, it's like a centimeter. Uh, maybe they're quite far apart, maybe they're you know, five, six centimeters. I don't know how big your circle is, but that's one of the wonderful things about circle properties, that no matter what circle you drew, no matter what interval you drew, um, this property I'm going to show you is going to work. Now, by the way, you already know what a circumference is. I want to tell you what this particular interval is called. Uh, it's called a chord. So a chord, like in music, um, a chord is a, an interval that joins two points on the circumference. That's all the chord is. Okay. Now, remember I asked you to measure this chord. Okay? My chord happens to be, obviously larger than yours, uh, 42 centimeters. Goodness, that's a big chord. What I want you to do for whatever length you drew is draw another chord somewhere else that's the same length. Can you do that? Just find anywhere else on the circle, draw a chord of the same length. Now, since these chords are the same length, we might as well mark them in as equal length. So I've got my two little dashes there. Okay, now we need to add a few more constructions on here. There is one point in a circle that is the most important point of all of them. Uh, it's what defines the circle. That point, of course, is the center. Right? So you need to find your center. Um, there's lots of ways to do that. I mean, because you used a compass, you probably made a tiny little mark on your page, so you can use that. Another way to find the center is to notice that every diameter of the circle, every diameter of the circle passes through the center, right? Now the diameter, if you notice I'm using this language, the diameter is a chord, it's not just any chord, it's the longest chord you can make in a circle, right? So another way that you can find the center, because maybe you didn't use a pair of compasses, is to take your ruler and measure across until you find the longest possible chord that you can draw, right? Um, so for example, the longest chord I could draw is about 67 centimeters, right? Uh, if I moved the ruler anywhere else, I would get a shorter chord. So once you've got the longest possible chord, you've found the diameter, and you can put the center right in the middle. Okay, now, these two chords, they form angles at the center. The fancy word for form in uh, the context of circle geometry is the word subtend. You can see it there um, as the, in the first line there. So what I want you to do with your ruler is to join up from these two chords, 
Join out lines at the center to subtend an angle. I'll show you what it looks like on mine. Here, that angle there is the angle subtended at the center by the chord. Okay, and you're going to get a similar one down here. Okay, so I've subtended two angles at the center, each on a different chord. Now, it's really sort of cumbersome to say this chord and that chord, so I am now going to give things some names. By convention, we almost always name the center of the circle O, just like the origin on a Cartesian plane. And then we can call these chords whatever we like. Maybe we'll call them P, Q, and R, S. So, what you've got, and these are the first two words I think on the, um, the sheet, what you've got are equal chords. Equal chords, you see them, right? Now what you should find is that the angles at the center, they clearly look equal, don't they? I mean, if you've actually measured it out, they must be, okay? Now I've said before when we were looking at geometry last week, you need more than just, oh it looks, <laughs> you know, it's sort of ish, close to each other. We want to prove that, okay? Now I want you to have a look. This is a very simple property, that's why it's the first one. You guys have enough knowledge in your mind to prove conclusively that the angles have to be the same. They're not just coincidentally, they have to be. Anyone want to suggest what we could do? Yeah, who's your question? Okay, so see this pair of triangles? Triangle POQ and triangle ROS. I can prove that they are, whoops, no, doesn't matter, that's okay. I can prove that the relationship between them is that they are congruent, right? They are exactly the same triangle, I've just spun it around, right? And the reason why, as you suggested, is S, S, S. But how would I know that? I'm not worried about writing it down, I just want you to talk it through with me. Say it again. Okay, great. It's a circle. The quintessential property about a circle is that anywhere from the circle to the circumference is the same length. So this length and this length are the same. And going on, this length and this length are the same. They're all radii. So I would say, for instance, if I were constructing a full proof for this, I'd say PO equals RO. Reason? Radii. Um, similarly, because I don't have to restate the reasoning, uh, QO equals SO. Done. And the chords, of course, are equal. That's how we started this. So I've got my three pairs of sides. If they're congruent, then, of course, I know that these corresponding angles must also be equal. They're not vertically opposite, by the way. I know they sort of look like it, but they don't have to be. I could draw them so they even overlap, like this. Something like this. If those two are equal... So that's a weird looking situation there, right? But if I've got this chord and this chord being equal, then I need a new color. <coughs> Let's have a look. Here is the angle subtended by one chord at the center. And here is the angle subtended by the other. They're clearly not vertically opposite. They're on top of each other, for goodness sake. But I've got the same congruent triangles here as I did here. And no matter what diagram you've drawn, you've got congruent triangles as well. So therefore, first property, equal chords, you can fill this in, sorry you're going to need to write small. Equal chords subtend equal angles at the center.